everyone. Um, so today we're in the Braintree campus. Um, it's a slightly different show tonight as we'll be spending some time discussing some world events which will be affecting young people like us. You'll have the opportunity to see the shorter version in our um, regular show in the forthcoming weeks um, and then obviously the longer version. We will be aiming to serve three moms, perhaps with others. Um, so yeah, tonight I have to my right I have Elliot and Oscar. Hello. Hi. And then to my left I have Chloe and Lizzie. Tonight's questions have been sent in by our subscribers, and currently it is um, LGBTQ or Pride Month, so that leads with my first topic, which is about Pride Month. Um, so at the moment, in Derby County, for the second time, they're choosing not to show the Pride flag because they don't want to single out one group of, and highlight one group of people within the community. So like, what's your guys' opinion? Do you think they're in the right here? Um, well, I think, I mean, it's crazy to think that, you know, you're taking one pe people, which is not... It's not, you know, I think we can all agree, right, on the LGBT community plus, is it LGBT, what is it, LGBTQ plus, isn't it now? Um, the LGBT, I can't even say it now, LGBTQ plus community. It's not, they're not trying to be above us, right? They're not trying to, you know, be all of us and be like, oh, look at us, oh, we're, we're so strong, we're, we're better than all of you. No, it's to recognize and to show people that you don't have to be afraid about your sexuality, you can you can be who you want to be, and some people don't feel that way. And so I think the flag represents that kind of image. I don't know what you guys, what do you guys think the flag represents? Yeah, I 100% agree. And saying that, trying to put it more in front, it's kind of like All Lives Matter, saying how, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. how Black Lives Matter is trying to put one thing in front when it wasn't at all. It's kind of similar to that. Yeah, I think with like Pride and Pride Month and everything, it's almost like a celebration of not having to be oppressed anymore if you are a member of the LGBTQ plus community. Yeah. So it's more of like a celebration as opposed to a look at us kind of thing as like the LGBT community. Yeah. It's interesting that that's how Pride Month has become though. Like, it started off as like, um, what was it, the New the York... Stone, right? Yeah, well, do you probably know it better than me. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> there was... Um, riot where um i can't remember her name but it was a black transgender woman um and she i think it punched a police officer and it uh started these massive riots so i don't know too much about it personally, yeah but yeah uh, these uh riots occurred and then protests and we sort of got to where we are today yeah they, they started doing the parades to celebrate themselves and now it's become this even bigger thing where people across the world now celebrate this one thing in the month by doing parades and more. And, what, I mean, I, I quite enjoy them. What, what do you think, um, Lizzie? What do you think? Yeah, sort of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Georgia, what, what do you think about, you know, the whole month of Pride Month? What do you think about it? I mean, um, I guess I agree with them having a month because I guess they have fought for, like, their rights here. So, obviously, them getting a month is justifiable because they are just... You know, celebrating what they kind of fought for. So. Yeah. Yeah. Also, yeah. Um, being part of the LGBT community, it's not like oppression and homophobia has suddenly disappeared. It's like racism is still an occurring thing. And Pride Month isn't just a celebration. It's not just a celebration. It's still a protest, even though it's recognizing who you are. It's still to try and gain the respect. It's, it's like the Black Lives Matter protests, kind of. Um, just to be recognised because there's still kind of open attacks. Yeah. Like so like as you say that, like so overall, like what do you actually think Pride Month and like the Pride Flag and everything represents to people now? I've got a contra contradicted no, what is it? A contr when you're against like the controversial that's the one. <laughs> uh, controversial opinion, which is about that uh, I kind of I'm less like happy or like wanna celebrate as much just because of the fact of or rainbow fl rainbow flushing is it? Or what is it called? Hold on, one second. Let me let me double check this. Let me fact check. It is rainbow washing? Now rainbow washing is essentially where you know you have this whole month of people celebrating you know their sexuali sexuality is coming out and being themselves, right? But the unfortunate thing is now is you have multiple companies and all these other things coming to these parades and you know kind of just you know, not really helping, you know, not really doing like the stuff that you should be doing, which is like donating to charities, helping people with like their mental health and like coming out and stuff like that. They just kind of just slap on, you know, you've seen like, what well, I can't name a single, what, what, what brands yeah, right now? they like the price flag in the back of their logo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, I'm trying to think of like really iconic ones. Apple does it, Nike does it, Everyone pretty much, pretty much any company pretty much does it. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like the, um, what 
what's it called? Here when everyone put like the black screen on. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I wasn't. It's, it's kind of like It's that. almost just doing it for show as opposed yeah. to doing it to make the marketing yeah. better. Yeah. Yeah, well, essentially, that's what rainwashing is. Is basically you, you've, you've got your flag up, sick, but what have you actually. You're, you're not actually doing actual work. You're just kind of just putting it up for no reason. I don't think that like reflects on Pride Month though in yeah. itself. I think it more reflects on um, companies and just being um, yeah. using other people. That's a really uh, you brought up a really good point there, which is another really good question that I want, I want to ask because I, I actually was really curious about this because I didn't actually do this. Do you know the black square thing? Yeah. Did you? Did anyone here do that? Uh, no. No one. No one. Okay. What, 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 can I now ask? What is your impressions on like? Have you all seen it? We all, yeah, we all saw yeah. it. Like it was like last year when like George Floyd passed away. You know what? I don't. I didn't get it really. I think everyone kind of did it because everyone else was doing it, and it you didn't want to seem left out. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly what I was thinking. I was like, how is? I just didn't see the kind of effect of it. I can understand like it was like no social media, right? Which is good for everyone, but like still, people used it because they posted it on it. I'm just like. Yeah. Like they're showing their like kind of respect by posting it. I got that, but it's like I think eventually it just become people just doing it because they wanted to feel like they were part of that. Yeah. I didn't really see any respect though. Like I'd rather someone like went out to a protest and like or just for anything to be honest. And if you write like a long paragraph where you're like this is meaningful to me because, then I'd be like, all right, I can see where you're coming from. Or if you do actual charity work, I'd be like, all right, I respect you. But when you just put it up, I just think it's so like. Yeah, I for the like media. People were doing it, and then just like in as their like caption of it, it was like hashtag Blackout Tuesday, hashtag Black Lives Matter. Yeah. So I thought if someone had written like an actual, genuine, really meaningful paragraph about the situation and their respect, it would have meant so much more yeah. than just a uh, hashtag Black Lives Matter. Black, like, Black Lives Matter. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. Too. That's just yeah. the trend. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So like. Yeah. Because we're on like the topic of Black Lives Matter. About a year ago, obviously, was the whole George George Floyd thing, which obviously kicked off all the Black Lives Matter protests. Um, and currently, the MP Diane Abbott she's manipulated a story about Black Lives Matter leader Sasha Johnson, um, who was shot because she well apparently stood up for racial justice. Like, so what do you guys think about this? Like, hasn't like you know? Um, well, I think it's just. I mean, it's kind of just where's the direction, right? So you've got this person who's kind of manipulated this story, right? about, you know, this random crime that's happened in London, right? You've got this random crime that's happened and someone's severely... I can't remember if she's died or she's severely she, she's injured. Still, she's, um, she's got shot in the head, I think. Yeah. She's still alive. Yeah. And now you've gone over to social media because of that. You're a highly... You're, she's the first ever black female MP. So she's a very... Um, she's got a lot of power, right? Really? She's got a lot of status. She's got a lot of followers. And you're going over to there and you're saying this... You're giving this narrative, right, that it has to do with Black Lives Matter. And... I don't like that because my opinion is it just seems like it's very attention-seeking kind of. You get me? Yeah, I get you. I someone can, someone can fact check me here or whatever, but um, she was killed in uh, not killed, uh, shot in the gang incident. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly yeah, no, I think she was, I believe. But um, with what she was saying, it could with her being shot, even though it wasn't anything to do with race, it still does reflect on other stories. So he could, I, I understand if he wanted to talk about black people being killed, mm. right, get that, but obviously it didn't have anything to do with that specific one. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, I agree on you then. I just, it just doesn't, it doesn't sit right with me and it didn't sit right with a lot of people because a lot of people yeah. called her out on it. Um, Try and push your narrative. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's not the way that I want, yeah, it's not really anything to go about. I'm trying to think of other things that you should talk about, like, like man, whether it's of course the protests uh, that go on. Uh, I can't remember if they're as prominent this year. Are they doing more protests this year? Not I can't that. actually remember. Black yeah, because I remember last year they were crazy. I attended one and it was definitely an experience and it was very educational for me because you see all these people and it's just very, it's a good experience. I think everyone should at least attend a protest for something that you sh like, you go, uh, want to you know, have a change for. Um, it did upset me, upset me though, because not much change happened, um, looking a year on now. But, you know, I, I mean, I'm trying to think of Black Lives Matter, what has been done from this point and now. Yeah, because I feel happened. like at the time of obviously like last year, time last year with George Floyd, I think there was a lot of like the protests happening. 
and now it's kind of just been not pushed back a bit, but like it's there's not as down. much now. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. like, but do you like think enough has been done now, or do you think? It should I be don't think thing? much has been done other than the fact everyone's kind of realised how corrupt like the policing system and everything is. And the moment is. I don't think any change particularly has happened other than everyone feeling like embarrassed. I'd I'd agree with you. I'd agree with you then. I'd agree with you then. I think. Yeah, I think policing has been like I think it's been we've opened up a can of worms and seen like how bad it is, right? Everyone knows like how like corrupt it is. What's the how long does it take to dentist and the police officer? Isn't there like a massive like you work for a dent to become a dentist it takes like years and then to become a police officer it takes like a year or something like that. Money to fix that whoever. Yeah, it's because they need more police probably. Yeah. So they, they don't have to really do as much. But the people like that are getting involved in it too are just like there needs to be some sort of like social check. You know, I, I don't know because it's just like you can get like high school bullies or people who have been bullied into the police force who will just take their power and they'll just bully other people because of it. Or they've grown up in a family where they are incredibly like, you know, offensive to a certain race, to a sexuality. And now they're going to take on those genes or like that mindset and now take that on to people. And that also sucks. So in that retrospect, I, yeah, policing kind of got better. But apart from that, I don't think there's much happening. It was really cool, though, to see everyone united, though, under like one banner. That was really cool. Yeah. Except unless it's for social media. That I don't like. I don't like the social media, like, you know, doing trends and doing games for that. Because yeah. that's, just, that's just stupid. Yeah, but. I think spreading awareness via social media, like certain posts which educate people, is really good. Because then obviously you're getting your point across, you're explaining to people who might not understand. Mm. But again, doing it for show is like. My question is do you think an Instagram post gives enough context? Like, no, do you if, think. If it, if it like. So obviously, always on social media, we have people putting posts on their stories about like LGBTQ plus yeah. community, you know, the coloured communities, and like and yeah. anyone kind of of a um, like minority. I want to say obviously it's not a minority, but yeah. you, like anyone who kind of gets discriminated against within this country. I think like some people do just do it for show, yeah. but then other people do genuinely do it because they want everyone to know about it. Yeah, my issue is just like I just feel like there's not enough information on like because I I mean I I go on Instagram sometimes and the first thing I go is on Instagram stories and the first thing that annoys me though and it's not really a I mean uh, it's bad if I say it like that um, the issue is right when I go on Instagram stories they're usually these news pieces which is good because everyone's spreading their own awareness but it does make me very upset because I feel how bad of a world we're in because we have to deal and spread awareness on all these bad situations. So that makes you sad, but there's nothing really you can do about it. And it's good people are raising awareness for it. My second thing is that I just, I just feel like people then become very biased to one point and one point only. It's like I understand there is like a, there might be a good side and a bad side to some like causes, like Black Lives Matter. I'm pretty sure we can all understand that George Floyd was murdered, um, but like to understand the whole re like whole story and all this intricateness and I mean like the police force itself is you need to do so much research into that so like to have an Instagram post I just don't really mm, it's not really yeah. it's not really for me I feel it's like with the uh, current like Israeli and Palestinian conflict oh yeah so many people are posting about it but it's all very biased against one side or another like, yeah there's no kind of look at the entire situation yeah it's and like, there's, look at it from this person's point of view and then look at it from yeah. this person's point of view and there's also just no, there's no way people can understand the entire situation, the history, the people, just everything that goes on there. You can't put that into an Instagram post for people to be like, oh yeah, all right, yeah, uh, free Palestine now. Because there's no, like, I understand, like, you, 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 you're trying to help a situation by spreading awareness, but you can't convince someone, or you shouldn't be able to, just on an Instagram post. That's my issue. And that's what annoys me, is because... And also when people give hard opinions on it too, when like you get into like a deep debate about something with like with the Palestinian stuff, you and they probably just like looks at an Instagram post. I mean, some do give good information, but you like the history behind the entire place itself 
is not in there, and that's what makes me annoyed because people just don't understand that. I feel some people post it to say they've posted it, but they don't actually post it for any reason. That's yeah. another thing that annoys me. Yeah, I just yeah, I just yeah, it just becomes very. And then the issue with that also is that it becomes very like um, you know uh, like heck, how can you tell if you're doing it for attention or to sh to show like or. Because my other issue is like you do it because you're like, oh, I'm showing that I'm a good person, you know? It's like. But are you really a good person if you're doing it just to show that you're a good person? Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. It's like it's like, oh, I know a friend who was like who's talking to me in it, and there was this other person who was like telling them. I was like, oh yeah, you got a post about this. You got a post. What was it? It was about the person who was the girl who was murdered earlier this year. What was her name? And then her body was oh, found. Oh, Sarah. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. So remember when I, all that stuff was going down, and then people, the, this girl was just like, um, "Can you please put this on your story?" And then he was like, "Why?" And then it's just like, "Put it on your story." And it's, and it's, it's like it's like guilt tripping someone into yeah. doing it. But then and then the person doesn't. Even, I mean, if I was in their shoes, you probably wouldn't even feel like a better person for doing it because you you were forced pretty much into it. Because if you didn't do it, then you just feel like a bad person, anyways. That's that's my opinion. Yeah, I think as long as like you're kind of putting it in for the right right reasons, it's good to kind of educate people. Because social media reaches a lot of people, but mm. I guess as well, it's like, you know, if you don't know anything about it, like you're just kind of posting it for the sake of it. So. Yeah. 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 We've gone very off topic here, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm talking a lot too, so I apologise to everyone over there if, because I am kind of talking a lot. But um, you're very passionate. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about a topic that I'm very passionate about. Yeah, I apologise. Um, back to Black Lives Matter. If in a hypothetical scenario, you are now the founder of Black Lives Matter, so you can uh, you're kind of just like you can push. Black Lives Matter and all the charity work in a single direction. What way are you taking it? Let's, let's, let's go around. No, Simon Oscar. Oh, okay. All right. Then. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Chloe, what about you then? Where would you? Why, why don't you start? Why don't you start? Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, where would I want Black Lives Matter to go? Well, definitely, I don't. It's a tough one, you know. Well, it's for charity work. It's charity work, so I definitely want it to be like. So it's difficult because, like, I don't want it to become corrupt or people, like, use it for attention and, like, stuff like that. Um, I'd probably just, like, continue doing the charity work, continue doing the protests. Um, what's the month for... Oh, what's the month? Is it February? That's, like, uh, Black History Month. What, what month is it? I it's, like, October time. Pizza. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it, that's it. Oh, yeah. Um, black... His, sorry, we're currently getting food delivered and we're going to carry on, just roll with it. Um, <laughs> Black History Month is a very important time. But it's not as celebrated. I don't feel like people celebrate it as them. Do you think that's okay? That Can we talk about that? The most about yeah. things like Pride Month and Black History Month. Yeah. Is that at school, like especially, oh, and there's also like that Mental Health Awareness Week or Month or oh, yeah. something. Like aware, awareness for separate causes, right? At school, they'll do like presentations on it, <laughs> and then after yeah. the presentation, they'll just never talk about it again. Yeah, that's what well, annoys me. Or posters. Yeah, about. they'll put up the posters like to show that as a school we care. Yeah, but I don't think any I of think, the teachers or the adults really. I mean, I think I think. Yeah, I'd agree with you there. I think it's more like they're checking the box of stuff that they need to yeah. do. It's like, right, we need to acknowledge that this exists and tell them that it's bad. All right, we've done that. Tick, and now they're and they, bring they it up do again. stuff like that, but then. They don't do anything about it, so it's like they'll put something up on the wall being like Black Lives Matter, but the, our school as a whole won't partake in any form of like protest or help to, or charity work towards it, and it's just like doing it for doing it, like we've said yeah. about the social media post. Oh, yeah, I'm, wait, so were, were you guys in school when all the, the Black Lives Matter? Yeah, you guys both. No. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. COVID. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, did they ever bring it up, ever? No, our school's Not never really. mentioned it. They might have done it in like a form assembly time, but to be quite frank, no one really watched them. No, no none of our school mentioned That's it. That's embarrassing. That's embarrassing, I think. Yeah, no. That is very embarrassing. Okay, so, um, pizza, so we have to stop a minute and then come back. Yeah. So we've now got pizza, and um, as we were getting it, we were talking about um, different like dips and stuff and how some things are and um, you either like them or you hate them and something about the special garlic dip? Yeah we've gone from very serious debates <laughs> to going to talking about special garlics. I thought it was just a normal garlic 
But apparently they only do a special garlic instead of just the... No I don't know what the normal garlic tastes like. But we've come to the conclusion that we don't like it. Yeah, it's just yeah. 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 Who likes it? You like it. Mm -hmm. Why? Why do you I like that bit? It just makes... It just adds flavour. Chloe, Georgia, what are your thoughts? Um, it's buttery and I don't like butter. So... <laughs> you like butter? I, I haven't tried it yet. Georgia, we're going to need a first-hand review on, on camera recording of you trying this. I'm double dipped. Imagine you just threw up. <laughs> <laughs> Cut the cameras. That's very suspenseful. Oh, that's what you like, isn't it? Oh. I'm in the middle. Like, I'm that like, oh. one person's in the middle. It's like, it's nice. I probably wouldn't, like, you know, have loads of it. It's very, like, it's very buttery. Well, no pressure, but you're the deciding vote because we're two no's, they're two yes's, so you're going to decide. I just no. Wait, you said no. <laughs> oh, oh, there we go then. Yeah, yeah. I'd say yeah. It's, it's nice. Yeah. Hey. Well, no. no. Well, I'm just keeps it here now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got pizza now, so that's cool. Um, is Jaffa cake a biscuit or a cake? Cake is called a Jaffa cake. Mm -hmm. I'd, cake. I, I, I'd, I'd agree on that. Yeah. I mean, it's simple logic. Cake or biscuit? Oh, I've got a banging question. Okay, this is gonna take some. This is gonna take some. This is gonna take yeah, some. Okay. We really went from serious to like. Yeah. Jack yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> Or the last one. Right, imagine if, right, let's just hypothetically, right, mm -hmm. a waiter is walking over to you, right? Let's just say that. So a waiter is walking over to you, he's got, he's got two plates, right? Mm -hmm. He puts down the two plates and there's two lasagnas on them, okay? He scoops one lasagna and puts it on top of the other. Now, do you now have one lasagna or there's still two lasagnas just stacked on top of each other? The one lasagna, right? I go crazy. Right, put your hand up if you think it's one lasagna. No, it's still two lasagnas, isn't it? No, but they're on top of each other. Yeah, but if they're on top of each other, it doesn't change the fact that previously they were two separate lasagnas. Yeah, but they're just changed. They used to be monkeys. Nah, nah. See, here's the thing, though, because everyone argues that it's because there's a tiny slice of cheese at the bottom of the layer of lasagna. But that is insignificant. It's in the middle. Right. I'm I thought, I thought carry, that you have a bottom layer of, the, of your lasagna, which is like the cheese, and then one says, Oh, if you put it in, if you put two on top of each other, then there's the hot dog. It's just no, the lasagna in a different, different order. No, yeah. but the thing is, right, it would be easier for you to take that half off, wouldn't it? So, theoretically, like, it, like so, okay, say, say <laughs> we go back to having the two separate lasagnas, okay. right? Yep. It's hard, to, it's going to be harder to separate like half of your whole one, right? If you get two put on top of each other, it's going to be easier to take them like off of each other. But it's, it's still one it's still lasagna. No, it's still one lasagna. You're telling me if I put the second lasagna on top of it, then take it back off, it's just now one half of a lasagna. No, no they're just back to the... That's not a lasagna. And take okay, half it's, half like, it's, like, it's, like, it's like putting carrots in a stew. Okay, so we're getting very heated on like a topic of like lasagna. We're getting more heated on lasagna than we yeah. did. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah we've agreed on everything else. Should we go back to like some actual heated topics here? So like, um, I was thinking go back to like kind of the LGBTQ thing we were originally talking about. Um, I was going to be on topic of trans rights. Um, so currently in Texas, they're not allowing trans people to participate in kind of sports and PE and that. So, um, what, like, what are your opinions on this? Do you agree with them? I'll start over left with Chloe and Lizzie. I don't agree with that. I think it's transphobia. Just because yeah. you were... Wait, so is it a trans women doing women's sports? No, this isn't... Yeah, but it, it could be, like, like, trans women doing cis women's sports, basically. Yeah, it could that be either be. way. I can be. I think once... I think, I think even if you still had, like, the genitalia of a boy, you still had the physical body, of a boy, but you identify as female, you should be able to do it. Yeah, but like, also, who says like the difference between sports? It's like, netball can be a boy's sport, rugby can be a boy's sport. It's like, it's weird. The I issue, the main issue about this state is about one word, and that is fairness. Is it fair that a trans woman, a transgender woman, is allowed to play in sports that she could? It's not about me. What? It's just a school. It's not about school? Yeah. But then... Never mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> actually, then. Um, yeah, and P is fine, surely. We're all yeah. agreeing on that, right? Yeah. We're all agreeing on that. Yeah, I think the main issue, which is more so where people might get a bit more up in air, 
is if it's fair competitively. Because, yeah, that's what, yeah, this is where the main debate is, right? Because we can all agree, yeah, it's fine for a, a, a transgender to play in the same court. Because they it's all... It. They banned it, though. Um, yeah, yeah, they're not allowing it, like, at all in Texas. Not they even just straight because straight up got rid of trans women doing cis women's sports. That's dumb. What? Is it not just for because competitive sports, though? Or is it just for no, any sports? Not. Casual sports? Yeah, it's just, like, for P and sports, like, anything, really. The MPE. I mean, no one takes P that seriously. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's ridiculous. Really cool. yeah, yeah. In some classes, like, the girls do tag rugby, whereas the boys just do normal rugby, and the boys do cricket, and the girls do rugby. <coughs> so they're not doing the same sports. Mm. We have a boy in the girls' PE class. Mm. Yeah. But it doesn't make any difference. No. Yeah, that makes no sense. But then the trans boys at our school, they just choose not to do PE, because yeah. the, the, the boys just, like, exclude them. Mm. That's a very good point. That's a very good point. Yeah, I remember. I was going to say there's yeah there's some boys in my P who are just I just don't want to be around the boys and rather be around the girls. Yeah, I think you should do whatever P you'd rather. Be. Sorry. No, 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 I think I you should do whatever P you'd rather be in. Because mm. obviously, also if you identify as like non-binary or like agender, you obviously don't fit into the gender binary of male or female. So it should just be whatever you're more comfortable. Can I ask a very personal question? Yes. Would you feel uncomfortable if a transgender would be in the same changing rooms as you? If they weren't... Mm, mm, it, it depends if they've transitioned from female to male or male to female. If they yeah. trans... If they... You're, you're doing your uh, girls' PA, you're going to do uh, netball, right? And there's this new kid who's now turned from a boy into a girl. Have they had to... Uh, no. What did no. they do? They don't have surgery, so they're still, genetically, they're still a boy. Um, no. I feel, I'd feel fine with it, I think. Yeah. Because I think it doesn't really matter, because theoretically, in your P changing room, you're going to have people, like, say, say it's an all girls changing room, you're going to have people who are attracted to women anyway, so if that was the worry, you're going to have to have that anyway, so yeah. it doesn't really make much of a difference. No. Yeah. I remember the transgender woman in our year, she just went into the, no, he just went into the, sorry, he went into the toilets, um, and that was um, their decision, and their choice was to do that instead. Mm. So, and then there's the opportunity of another question. Should there be non-gender... Change rooms, toilets, stuff oh, like yeah. that. Yeah. No, I like that. I think that's good. Why is that? Yeah, because I think in the case of people that are uncomfortable being around people that haven't transitioned or whatever the scenario is, um, having the option of there being a gender neutral change room or bathroom really would sort of cover all bases. So everyone would kind of be happy with that because then the people that aren't comfortable don't have to be around what they're against. Mm. Whilst the people that are non-binary, whatever they identify as, are in a safe space and they feel comfortable in. So. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I agree with that too. I think it, it must be, you must feel so bad when you, you made this massive decision and you come out as being transgender and now you've been forced to have to change into a to, in, in a toilet. That must make you feel some sort of like loneliness and I think separation. I the idea that we all get changed together anyway is a bit weird. Yeah. Like now we're all growing into like adults and we're mm. all having more or less fully, de well, our bodies are developing, or for some people in some cases they're actually fully developed. I think it's a bit weird, especially since like half of us aren't even really friends. That's like just getting changed with a group of strangers, which you wouldn't do in a normal situation anyway. In our, in our change rooms, because we have like, yeah, so um, ours goes up to the 17 year olds from 13 year olds to 17 year olds in one change room which i think is a bit weird mm. that's just like that's that's odd because there's someone that's fully developed and then mm. there's like 13 year olds creepy yeah, yeah. little children it's, yeah it's, yeah it's a bit weird yeah yeah but obviously like the school can't afford to have single yeah. change rooms for everyone but i just I like what we're doing at the moment because like, obviously we don't get changed together for PE anymore. We come to school in our PE kit on the days which we have PE. I think we should just do that anyway. Yeah, no, I agree with that. It makes sense. Because yeah, then you don't have to get changed and you just get to... It doesn't really make much of a difference to yeah. your education. How we should say like that as well, yeah. I need to ask, about the transgender people at your school, how did that go with like, teachers and 
intangible? I mean, they just... The only thing that was the main issue was changing the name and, like, people misgendering them and using the wrong pronouns. Yeah. And then people found out that they were transgender and did it on purpose, um, just to be a pain. People being... That was just the main issue. Yeah. Do your teachers respect people's pronouns? Um, some do, and some really just don't. But I think that almost is... It, this is probably going to come off as quite bad, but I think for some teachers, it's like the, their um, like generation. Yeah. It's like the older... It tends to be the older teachers that are less respectful towards the LGBT community, you know, and you know, anyone who identifies under that umbrella. I still think that they should, that they still need to give their level of respect though, or like discipline, right? Because I remember in my school, back to the, the, the boy who was transgender, um, she left the, he, oh my God, I keep messing up, I'm so sorry. He left the room and everyone was like, oh, yes, you gotta deal with it, you gotta deal with it. Oh, and then they were explaining what's happened. And then she like men like had like almost a breakdown. She was like, uh, and then someone corrected her and was like, uh, Miss, it's a he. And then and then she legit goes, he, her, I don't care what it is. And so I think, I mean that's just a shock. Right? Yeah. That's not good. I think teachers need some level of like discipline where that can't run. Yeah. Right. Well, I think the thing is, if you can't change everyone's views on everybody. That's just like never yeah. gonna happen. And so in scenarios of teachers having some sort of bias or whatever you want to call it, um, they could actually like, keep it to themselves because even if you aren't, yeah, I don't know, but <laughs> keep it to yourself. Yeah. I think this thing is kind of, you know earlier you were saying about how there was teachers that were like not raising awareness, but you know, they put a post drop or they do a PowerPoint on that. Mm. But these are the same teachers that are then um, like misgendering students or like, you know, not really giving their own respect. Like, don't you think that's interesting how, you know, they're trying to raise, raise awareness, but surely that just means they are just doing it. Going back to what you were saying earlier, they're just doing it just because they've been told to. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, yeah, that's just school for you. It's just Everyone's just tech checklist for the teachers just to get a paycheck. That's all it is. Yeah. Yeah. Back to the point, though. <laughs> I, I want to I come back to this, right? Because we, because we jumped over that. Sports, competitive sports, transgender people, are they allowed to do it? What are your opinions? In competitive sports, maybe for money, maybe in the Olympics, are they allowed? Um, of course they should be allowed to do it, but I think, I, I feel like, I don't know how to explain this, but like, there should be, if there is, to, like, I don't know, if it's something like, so say someone's transitioned from male to female. Right. And they obviously still have like the testosterone like a man would. Yeah. And they're competing in something like weightlifting mm. if in, for the women's team. They are probably going to be better because they have that, you know, that was testosterone to yeah. do it. So I think in senses like that, it is it can be seen as unfair. But it kind of is unfair. <laughs> I think it's a difficult situation entirely because it's unfair to have someone. There's someone yeah. on both sides. Yeah, it's unfair both sides. It's yeah. unfair for the person that has transitioned mm. to not be able to do what they love. Yeah, because they can't help that they're yeah. transgender. And well, and there is, whatever. like, at the moment, there is um, the whole thing with the Olympic athlete. Um, she's been accepted finally to do the weightlifting um, in the Olympics, but fellow com like competitors or whatever, they're like just not happy with it because they think it's unfair, which is like, I think you were starting to say something like that earlier about like the unfairness of it. So like, what's your opinions on like that kind of thing, like as you were saying? It's unfair on both sides. It's unfair for the people that are playing against the person because that a major disadvantage, but it's also unfair on the person not being able to do what they love. So in that one, it's kind of like a, it's a lose-lose scenario. I mean, either way, you're going to be upsetting one side yeah. of the argument. You're always going to be upsetting someone. If you do or someone. you don't, you're still going to... Yeah, exactly. You're always going to hurt someone. And so yeah. that's why I think that conversation is such a difficult one, because no matter what the outcome is, you're going to be hurting someone. I'm just glad it didn't go the way that it was originally going to go. Um, with the Florida being banning transgenders uh, being in uh, competitive sports, under the uh, Fairness in Women's Sports Act is what they call it, um, and in this act, and the original, initially, it contained provisions that would force some children to undergo a routine sports physical examination to inspect their genitals, genetic makeup, and testosterone levels. Lawmakers have since removed the genital, genital inspections. 
Can you imagine that? Wow. I mean, like, that would have been way worse. So I'm glad that is that the happen. way that it is. Because if it was, you had to be almost checked and almost, some people might be, even feel humiliated doing that. Yeah. So in that s- section, there is some good news to the story. I mean, it, like Oscar said perfectly, it's a very, com- like, complicated and really difficult to find, like, the proper solution. Because you're going to hurt either side either way. But there are good sides because luckily stuff like that wasn't added and people's privacy is still being respected. Everyone's being respected still. So but what, what is it now? If you say, say I was a, like a trans woman and I wanted to do a women's sport, what would I be, how would I be treated and what would they do? Um, what they would do is they would, I think it's just to check testosterone levels, I believe. And it's just to, I feel it's same, it's same with that weightlifting thing, isn't it? It's just like checks like, if you're after puberty, if you've grown, like check like your muscles and like how much you weigh. And if if you've grown from puberty as a man, then you're going to be definitely because change from transgender is you get hormones inside you which changes your like genetic form and like everything about you. You start to grow breasts. You start to do other stuff. You know, it's it's a it's a very complicated like process. It's very very long as well, from what I've heard, and very 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 difficult to go through because you're getting all these different hormones in your head and everything starts to ache and all that stuff so in that set um, like kind of perspective you'd want them to be competitive because they've gone through so much already that you just want them to compete but it's just it's back to just fairness but then it's yeah it's just difficult because like in some sports i guess it's fair already i don't know really yeah you're doomed if you do and you don't like weightlifting, especially, I, like I can imagine why those issues came across. But like with um, like stuff like football, maybe that wouldn't be as much. So like maybe it wouldn't be as much of a problem if transgender uh, decides to do football instead, like stuff like that. Okay. Um. Yeah. So go on to some kind of. Um, I'm going to move on from the kind of the whole, you know, LGBTQ black lives matter thing. Um. Move on to some, like kind of lighter things. What's your opinions at the moment? Um. The government's decision, like literally tonight, about removing Portugal from the um, green travel list and all like all to COVID nineteen. What's everyone's opinions on like that? Be patient. Yeah. People are not being patient enough. Mm. God damn it! I won't come over and please just try your best. Wear masks. Get vaccinated. Do everything you want. Don't let there be another lockdown. I sound like yeah. Boris Johnson. Eh? <laughs> it's, it, if you want to go on holiday and to fully enjoy yourself without the worry of. Covid right. quarantining, text, te- uh, texting, testing, all that stuff. Just wait another few months until everything fully dies down. Because what's the date where if all goes as planned? Oh yeah, the twenty first of June. Twenty first. No, I mean, it's not going to happen by it's, the end of this I month. Tell, I think there was a thing where they were planning to extend that date, like to a bit further, because of like the new variant and stuff. So. I, I'm not surprised, but just wait it out. You can not put other people's health at risk. To be, to be honest, if you're if you're going on a holiday, especially with like the Amber List, where it's been fully, the government has said, don't do it, it's stupid, even though it's not illegal. And to do that is just showing complete ignorance, and it's, it's just, it's, it's stupid in itself. I think, yeah. yeah, I think, obviously, like, I'm not massively opinionated on this, because I'm still a child, and I still have to kind of learn about stuff, like topics like this, and the government, and obviously the whole economic system and the eat out to help out and stuff because obviously you don't equally want the economy to crash by not letting anyone out but I yeah. think the biggest mistake with the lockdowns was having that awkward second one which was a month long period before Christmas mm. I think it was so pointless the, the one where they kept all the schools open yeah they that kept all the schools stupid. open but I couldn't see my friends after school and it's like well I'm in a classroom without wearing masks all day with them what's that, that was really not, it, it was like they were going down they were doing it like halfway. It was there was there was gonna be no and also, it was nothing was gonna come out of it, which because then there was like a lockdown, a full lockdown straight after it. It's it was silly because the, the most of the cases, what was it like? I can't if it was a quarter or half of the cases were coming straight from schools, mm. and so it was completely. I, I, that was a weird lockdown. And yeah, I think it's just because they wanted to give hope for Christmas. That's all it was, wasn't it? Yeah, I think they did it to give hope for Christmas, but then we didn't even end up yeah. having yeah. Christmas. Well, anyway, why it was, it was like different across, down. like, yeah. She just really shut everything down, shut the schools down, and then it'd be Christmas. But then after Christmas, it all went off again. Oh, mate. 
that the time after is... Christmas was the worst time of my life, honestly. My mental health went... Yeah. That sucked so much. The people that want to go on holiday are the ones that haven't been following the lockdown rules the whole time. They're like, oh, but just let us out. But they've been out the whole time anyway. Yeah. yeah. I had the people it's that... Like, just make uh, it legal. We're going to do it anyway. I had well, the people that, that say, oh... We're going off, um, we've got to go repair our holiday home for a week. So they're repairing their holiday home for a week. Because that's allowed. Doing repairs and stuff, I think, like, or like fixing up stuff is allowed. So you can technically go, go abroad then. There's so many loopholes that people are trying to break through it. It's just, oh. Yeah. And Boris, if you're watching, get rid of the traffic light system. It's really stupid. Tell them. <laughs> Tell them. Yeah. Did you see on the news out? Dominic Cummings said that Boris wanted to get coronavirus injected into him on live air to show people that he, no one should be afraid of the virus and that we should all just be very chill with it because he got injected with it. He's, I mean, that was like with Trump, wasn't it? He got COVID. He was like, look, see, I'm fine. I've Boris got COVID. And he almost died. He almost yeah. died of it. Yeah. <laughs> he almost yeah. died of it. Yeah. Isn't, Boris almost got COVID and almost died of it. And then when the new Indian variant came along, wasn't he planning to go to India and then yeah. said, I'm going to go. I'm gonna go, and then everyone was like, "No, that's stupid." When how many? It's like a hundred thousand. Wasn't it like in the first lockdown, Boris? So, or it was someone like really high up in Parliament. Oh yeah, and they went, went on holiday. Visit like their family for a oh, week. Oh yeah, that was Dominic. You're not allowed to travel. Yeah, when, when everything like, that was really kicked off. That, that was probably Dominic, or it was I the. Think it was, I think or it was, it was the lady on the train. I don't know who it was. It was definitely a man, and they yeah. said that they'd gone to the dentist. Yeah, that's Dominic. Then they'd gone to that's Dominic. Yeah. It's like, Did, didn't well. they have COVID symptoms and they went to see their grandparents or, or their parents? Which like, that was with a female MP on the train. She went all the way up to Glasgow, I'm pretty sure, and she knew she had COVID, but she still went. See, wow. that's like oh, literally, that and everyone's going to find out about that. Like, if you were doing it in complete secrecy, no, it doesn't make it right, but at least no one's going to find out about well, it. No, it's, like, it's, like, it's more the issue that do. is a bloody MP. It's like literally the people that should be representing and showing yeah. like that's what people should be. That's yeah. embarrassing. If Can you imagine like uh, like police officers having coronavirus and they're just walking around and just being chill or like breaking the law casually? Like, that just no. Embar- that's, yeah. you, looking at, imagine if you were like France and you're just like looking in on Britain. Just, could you imagine? We'd be like, like idiots. It's so <laughs> think, like, I mean, France have, a, yeah. France have a, a few problems themselves, but yeah, politics, huh? Yeah. That's politics for you. I think it was quite difficult. That, like, I think it's almost quite difficult to follow the rules because they're changing so much so often. And it's like, when it came to that second lockdown that we were just talking about, I don't think half the people even knew we were in a lockdown. Yeah. We were still going to school. Like, nothing literally changed. Literally yeah. nothing changed other, other than like you can't go in people's back gardens. It was like, well, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was honest. a weird lockdown. Okay. Yeah, that was. Yeah. So yeah, so like that concludes tonight's debate for I on something kind of you know, easy like that. But yeah, it's been great, like, hearing all the discussions and everyone's viewpoints. I think everyone was mostly agreed, like, you know. Yeah. Everyone had that very, like, kind of generally kind of good opinion, like, you know what I mean? Oh but yeah, so yeah, thank you, and thank you everyone that's watched our discussion tonight. So yeah. See you thank next you. time. Bye. 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 If you have been affected or touched by any of the issues raised tonight, please do get in contact or comment below. And if you have, like, any opinions or anything you'd like to share, if you're comfortable doing so, please do comment. But be, like, be respectful and be mindful of others.